Hi everyone, thank you for joining this webinar. Today in this webinar, I'm going to teach you how to design your own home. So to start me, let me introduce myself. I'm Megha and I'm the founder of H2 Designo. It is a blog that I started with interest in designing my own space. What I realized that it is very difficult to find a budget friendly uh, way to design your own space. You know, when you hire an interior designer or architect, there are two biggest issues that we faced. One is lack of knowledge. And two is the kind of money that we have to shell out to do something that maybe is not even worth that much. So um, I'm trying to create a platform wherein you can um, design your own space, have knowledge so that, you know, tomorrow, even if you're hiring an expert, you exactly know what you want, what they are talking about. And uh, I'll give you some small tricks and tri uh, tips, you know, in which it will help you um, understand what they are saying. It'll help you. Sometimes you want to do your own house. You can do it by yourself. You're not obliged or, uh, you know, it's not compulsory for you to actually only hire a designer. So my entire blog, if you see, it's h2designer.com. If you go there, there's a section called guidebook. And today I will take you through that section where I've had a lot of tutorials where I've made people understand the small basics. Like there are things like color schemes. There's things like how to design a TV unit. You know, what should be the size of the TV unit? What should be the distance from your bed? These are very basic concepts that people sometimes, you know, uh, you like something, but is it practically possible to do it? So this is one major, uh, I think, loophole that I've found when people design their own houses, that they buy really expensive, exclusive things. They look good, but practically, sometimes it is not um, what will work for you as feasible. So once you start living with it, you understand the flaws and then you don't become very uncomfortable to stay with it. And then you've spent so much money, so it's not easy to change it. So um, let's start today with some basic tricks some basic tips that you know when you are wanting to do not only the entire house but a small space it can be even a desk space for your home that now you know in quarantine people are working from home so if you just want to make it like a little more professional a little more cozy depending on your taste how you can do it so let's start with it and i will share my screen and show you some yeah i hope all of you can see the screen uh, thank you. I'm glad you can see the screen. If you have any questions, you can um, put them in the chat box and I'm, you know, while I'm going through this and I will answer them. You know, any doubts, any things you don't understand. So starting with how you design your own home. So the basic is first is your expectation. What do you want your home to be? Do you want it cozy? Do you want colors? Do you want it black? Do you want contemporary? I think to start with as basic as know what your vision for your home is. So if you're doing a space, do you want it cozy? Do you want it colorful? Do you want it black and white? It can be anything. You know, some people like antique looks, some people like the modern looks, some people like more furniture, some people like minimalistic. So first, just have a clear cut idea of what you want. Second, analyze your space. Measure the perfect square feet, height, beams, columns of the apartment. Always know that two things, you cannot break the beams of your, of your apartment. It is not allowed. Hi, I'm so sorry. I think I lost connection, guys. I hope you all can hear me. Great. Um, so I will share my screen again. Yeah. So I was talking about analyzing your space. So I was talking about beams. So always understand that the beams of your building uh, of your apartment cannot be broken as per the law of the BMC. So never, never or uh, try to touch that beam. So now I think, can you all hear me everybody? Yes, okay. Um, so this is how your generally a layout of um, a house, if you see from the top will look like you can see in this picture. It has, you know, depends on where you, this, this looks, this is the kitchen, then you can have your entrance, then you know, there's bedroom, there are other stuff. So if you want to make it a study, you want to make a bedroom, where your washroom will be. So this is how a basic layout of the house looks. Then set your budget. You know, you may have plans for lavish living for your home, but splurge wisely and not insanely because you will only end up regretting it in the long term. Invest in something you are glad to see. I'm so sorry. I think there is a problem in my connection. Just give me a minute. I will switch my connection.
um i'm extremely sorry for this so i have switched my connection now i don't think so there should be a problem anymore okay so set your budget right you know understand that if even if something like a sofa set or a tv unit can cost you anything from around 60000 to 6 lakh to 10 lakh rupees so where you want to budget it what actually makes sense on spending what doesn't so it's very important list down your requirements the number of bedrooms bathrooms you wish to accommodate you know you want attached bathrooms you don't want attached bathrooms you want one bathroom between two bedrooms so that is how you have to buy for kit you know you wish to dedicate to how much space you wish to dedicate to your living room to your kitchen to the rooms for accommodating some dream luxury items like you know home theaters a gaming room kit rooms for kids you know or guests or um you know a gym like that is very common nowadays people have this entire room where they dedicated to a treadmill a cycle few dumbbells so know what is necessary which you will really need like first comes the bedrooms and the kitchen then accordingly please bifurcate your um, other spaces to your bathrooms and to your living room you know sometimes i think a common mistake that i've really seen um while doing spaces or seeing other people's spaces as they make the living room so big that the uh, bedrooms become like tiny and in the long run because you know you're going to be a lot of time in the bedroom especially if you're a young couple or you know your your kids are there who study in the room it's going to be very difficult if you have a very small room because living room is a space yes you know where people come and that is the first space that people enter and you want it to look nice but bedroom is your space so don't make the living room so big that your um, bedrooms become very tiny secondly i would personally recommend that please have attached bathrooms because in the long run it really is very difficult when you don't have attached bathrooms i understand you can have a common bathroom for guests and guest rooms but when it comes to the master bedroom or bedroom for your children or your old age parents it's always advisable to have a small bathroom in the room so please list down your requirements then sketch a rough floor plan plan i know you'll be like you know oh my god how can you make a floor plan we are not an expert it is a work of an interior designer but trust me if you sketch it's as simple as just drawing a box which is your room and then placing your furniture like this is where my bed will be this is where my tv will be this is where i have a sofa it is as simple as that you don't have to do any fancy sketching and you know things like that just like i'll just show you a picture if you see this fair enough this is a more professional outlook but it's as easy as drawing like this box your bed placement your bathroom placement you know your wc placement your shower area placement it's as simple as that so you don't need to be an expert now this is the most most important things all the girls in the seminar especially if they are married they will understand that how necessary it is to have storage quite often we forget that you know storage is the most important part of an entire house you know you sometimes you have, you know there are utensils and uh, things like even clothes if you don't have sufficient cupboard space your clothes are all the time lying outside you don't know what to do with it and um, when it comes to storage like utensils i think that's the maximum in indian households where i see that we have a lot of utensils you know we have different utensils for guests coming in we have utensils when we are at home there are utensils for functions um so please have a lot of storage space people with children you require a lot of storage for their toys for their clothes for their beddings a lot of things so have sufficient storage that you feel you will require and make a specific planning for storage it is very necessary tech savvy also thinking about all the electronics and equipments you want to use in your house for different purposes make sure you do not end up using up all your money on designing your home do not keep in mind that you will require certain equipments and certain handy electronics they are a must when it comes to an oven sometimes a chimney you know in the so all these are your additional cost so your cost is not only your furniture but electronics will also be a significant cost when it comes to um designing your space you will need that oven you will need the chimney a lot of people do use chimney it's good for health so that you do not inhale so much of um, fumes you know while you're cooking you're frying so yes please do have 
an account of the electronics and equipments. If you are somebody who loves movies, you know, if you want to spend on a home theater, then that is an additional cost. A nice music system, all these electronics are an additional cost and they are on an expensive side. Also coming to uh, equipments for kitchens. Now that you, if you see there are air fryers, oven, there are so many electronics that have come for kitchens, steam irons, which are expensive, but they are necessary. In electronics, I would even say equipments and all your AC, like the range of AC you want. Always remember that a lot of times people be like, oh, you know, in this room you will need so much. But sometimes a one ton AC or one and a half ton AC is also sufficient than a two or a three ton. So please be very wise when you select all this and have your mind in place rather than, you know, being like, okay, whatever you suggest, because obviously they will suggest you the best, but is it the best for you? Does it fit into your budget? And is it worth making that kind of um, expense? Vastu alert. A lot of people believe and a lot of people do not believe in Vastu. So in case you follow Vastu, get expert advice here. You know, I've seen one thing with Vastu. If you see online, there is a lot of material, but you never know which material is right, which material is wrong. The same thing a lot of people interpret differently. So I think I would recommend that here, do spend the little money. I personally do believe in Vastu. I believe uh, the entrance, the bedroom, the kitchen, the WC have to be in a certain uh, space for prosperity and for happiness and uh, you know calmness in the house. I also feel Vastu is not just for wealth or prosperity. It's a lot, lot to do with um, the vibe of the house, how um, you know peaceful you want your environment to be. So I think Vastu does play a very important role. So you do not wish to compromise on something you so adamantly believe. Self-study may not be the best idea in this case. So for Vastu, I would really say you can um, always take expert help. Do your homework. You may think you have the best memory, but the internet has so much to offer that trust me, you will be in love with practically everything you see. Make a separate idea book for your home and keep as much reference images as you can. One more thing I would say is that do not get flown by the kind of content you will find on the internet. There is, it's like content overload. You don't know what to take. So be very focused when you are even searching the internet and I'll be like, you know what, I will start searching the internet and I will figure on my way. It's very difficult because there's an overload of information. So I think Pinterest, then a lot of sites, even if you see my H2 designer blog, you will find a lot of ideas that we've given in terms of um, themes like Scandinavian theme, tropical theme, monsoon theme, color combinations. We have black and silver, we have blue, we have black and white, we have blue and yellow. So there are a lot of um, themes also. So obviously, you know, you, you should know that what you like, what you don't like. So maybe if I, I'm, in, in my case, if I have to do my bedroom, I will not take a black and gold. I'm not a fan of black anywhere in the house. Whereas if people have this entire space where they have a bar area or something, I think for them, yes, a black theme would go really well. So know what you want and then start your research. Glance around. Visit your friends and neighbors who have recently run up their apartments for you to get a better vision. It's always nice for you know people who've done up, you get ideas on the kind of materials they use and the kind of costing. So right now, um, very recently when I just went to a friend's house, I found this automated thing. Now it's very common, but back then there's something recently means two, three years back where, you know, you have the entire automation system on your fan, ACs, lights, and um, curtains. I think it's very nice to have it because, you know, it's very handy and things like that. So I liked the concept. So I implemented it in my house. So when you look around, you'll never know what idea somebody has got, what piece of art they've picked up from some place. Like I remember that I had, you know, I had gone to Jaipur once and I thought this is really nice showpiece. It was literally from a market on the street. I had picked up a showpiece and I had put it in my house and everybody had loved that showpiece, you know. So when you look around, when you have an open eye, you know, obviously, obviously get ideas. Learn from the experience of other people. Trust me, you will not want to do the mistake that somebody has previously done. And every time somebody does up a house, there are mistakes that everybody does. So have a close look on that. I will tell you one mistake that I did in my house was, um, I left the, so I did a centralized AC in my bedroom. And uh, in the long run, I realized that it was so cold and the blow was, you could not adjust the blow of that AC. As per the fixture that I had done, it looked very pretty, but practically it was not making sense. And I had to break the entire thing down and make, and, and, and shift it was pretty AC. So yeah, I just feel that, please glance around. Snapshots, you know, when you're moving around in your apartment, 
in a store just take, take pictures now with a smartphone it's very easy to just take pictures of something you like so you know how to incorporate it and um, you know like put it in your house be ready with your concepts have at least two concepts ready for the look and the feel of your apartment and space the reason we say two is because some things just look best on paper but when it comes to actual implementation you might want to reconsider or you may not exactly find the things that you like in the market um so always have a backup plan so example again i um, purchased this projector i wanted a home theater feel in one of the rooms that i had and i um, really like this projector and got a good rate for it and very nice life fixed up in my room without realizing that though the projector back there in the store looked beautiful the distance from my space of seating to the projector was less so it felt as if i'm watching a movie sitting on the first row which is not a good experience so when you have to do that for a longer time it becomes very tiring so i realized that i should have bought a smaller projector though it looked very nice it was the best quality it was not meant for my room so your concepts have to be clear because implementation is one thing that sometimes you can go wrong with the expert is it and now hire an interior designer who will help you create your dream space with your idea and the expertise yes up to actually deciding what you want for your home to be like is easy to manage but when it comes to practically it is best to hand it over to a professional make sure you do seek correct expert advice so yeah when it comes to like um, maybe planning the space with furniture only you can do it yourself but when it comes to electricals you know fittings uh, plumbing fittings um, light fittings i think if you're not an expert it's very difficult to understand how to do it so you are here you will need advice but once you know the basic concept when you once your vision is clear trust me you will exactly know how to go about it and you know you can't be carried away or taken away or sold anything to but expert advice will always help so i will show you another post where um, which i really like a quick um, post from my own blog which is um second importance of a color wheel so what is the importance so this is where you start from when you start please 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 if you, if, if you really interested and you want to do your own house start with this the color wheel understand there are two types of colors here i have described them as warm and cold cold i make you know make, make you feel very relaxed and peaceful whereas warm colors are more energetic colors you know sometimes they look very nice oh i have like um, red violet um, wall and red cupboards but trust me there are a lot of warm colors sometimes can be really heavy too much of energy so have a combination i have an entire explanation here if you see of monochromatic uh, color schemes of you know how you can use one tone and generally we say that when you use one tone like um all the shades of blue please go for cool colors do not use warm colors in one room with all shades because they become very heavy so um i would really suggest something like this for your house again if it's a restaurant or something else you can go for uh, other shades so please go through this post where i have shown you different color schemes but yes the first thing is to decide color schemes also remember something that looks on paper like you know i have put up this picture right but when you use so much of blue and then so much of dark blue a person who enters it feels so much always remember that a combination of white and color for me always plays and you can obviously play around with accessories like in this picture if you can see there are pillows of different colors photo frames shade, lamp shades of red you know like an ottoman so play around with accessories rather than wall colors because that will give you scope to keep changing as and when required so please go through this post to just start off with and i'm glad i could help you all in some way or the other um you all can post any questions that you have i haven't got any questions so i'm assuming that everything is clear but still if you all have any more questions you can always email us on info@h2designo.com and we'll be more than happy to help you all to design your own space and thank you once again for being part of this webinar thank you so much bye have a good day